Close your eyes. Make up your mind you're going to stay with the breath. Watch the breath as it comes in. Watch that as it goes out. And stay with it. Once you've made up your mind to do something good, you want to have that quality of endurance and patience, stick to itiveness, so you can see it all the way through. So you stay with the breath all the way through, as it comes in, all the way through as it comes out, and try to make it comfortable. That's one way that makes it a lot easier. Powers of endurance are best encouraged when you can focus on the things that are not hard to endure. In other words, when the situation in your life gets bad in one way or another, you have to remind yourself, well, there are a lot of things that are still good, a lot of things that still give you strength, and you focus on those. So it's just staying with the breath. If you don't pay too much attention to it, it starts to get boring after a while, then you're going to wander off for sure. But if you ask yourself, what's the most comfortable way to breathe right now? What feels really good in the lungs, in the stomach, in the intestines, all throughout the body? as you're breathing in, as you're breathing out, what kind of breath, short, long, fast, slow, heavy, light, would feel good right now, and try experimenting. This way as you let yourself get interested in what's going on in the present moment, you begin to realize a lot of important things are happening right here. All your decisions are being made right here. You begin to see the mind as it moves, and have, you have something solid against which to measure it, so that at the slightest movement you know. And then you have the chance to make up your mind. No, back to the breath, back to the breath. It's this quality of stick to itiveness. That's what really makes all the difference. It's like saving up money. You save up a little today, you save up a little tomorrow, and you have to keep it up all the time. You come up, you end up with a large sum at the end of the year. But if you save up a little today, and then you splurge it, and then you go out and have another splurge, and then you, there's nothing left. Even though you saved the same amount of money, but you didn't keep it together. You didn't stick with it. So try to have this quality of sticking to something, especially when it's something good. Either sticking to the precept you might have taken, like just now. We took precepts against killing, stealing, having illicit sex, against lying, and against taking intoxicants. Okay, once you make it up your mind that that really is a good thing to abstain from these things, then you want to stick with it. And learn how to encourage yourself to stick with it. Remind yourself that you don't want to go through life with a lot of scars in the mind. And that's what we do when we do things that are unskillful. We leave scars. And then either it's a very tender scar or else it gets a lot of scar tissue on top of it. It gets toughened and it gets de into denial. And either way, it's not a comfortable thing to have in the mind. So it's best to avoid those things in the very beginning. So you stick with that decision, and you find that your life gets lighter. Or in cases of actually doing things that are actively positive helping people, giving them things, giving your time, giving your knowledge. Once you've decided that you want to give something every day, you find that at the end of the, end of the year you've given a lot, whether it's a material thing or whether it's your help, whether it's your time, just taking the time to listen to somebody else when they need to be listened to. By the end of the year you've developed a lot of good qualities in the mind, and these good qualities are things that make life worthwhile. All too often we measure our lives in terms of our wealth, our status. But those things are not really under our control. We can amass them for a while, and then they, then they go simply else, because they're not really ours. But if you learn how to measure your life in terms of the good qualities you have in mind, that's totally under your control. That's a decision you can make every moment of the day, every time you breathe in, every time you breathe out. So we, everyone's going around saying Happy New Year in the past couple of days. Well, to be a Happy New Year means that you have to do happy things, i.e. things that lead to happiness. We can't wait for it just to come our way. We have it within our power to create the causes for happiness. So you want to, that's something you really want to stick with, whether it's abstaining from unskillful behavior or developing more and more skillful qualities in the mind, and cleansing the mind of its greed, aversion, and delusion, as we're doing while we meditate here. All of these things are good things. All of these things lead to happiness. So you want to make sure you've got the causes of happiness straight. And then when someone says Happy New Year, it means, okay, it's basically an encouragement. Be generous. Be virtuous, get the mind into concentration. That kind of year is sure to be happy, as the Buddha says. And when they talk about auspicious days, the really auspicious day is when you are very clear about what's going on in your mind, and you encourage only the good things, let go of all the things that are unskillful. And that way you can have the whole year as auspicious, regardless of the stars, regardless of the numbers or whatever. 
because it's up to you. It doesn't depend on the stars or the numbers. It depends on your actions, your choices. And you're free to choose the skillful thing every moment of the day, every time you breathe in, every time you breathe out, to try to take good advantage of that opportunity. And the year will be a happy one.